Hey everybody, Catherine here with another MyCom tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to remove background noise from your audio using Adobe Audition. One of the things that separates amateur video from professional video is audio. And one of the most common problems you'll run into is the presence of unwanted or unavoidable background noise. Background noise can be things like the hum of an air conditioning unit or of your equipment or outdoor noises like a lawnmower, cars driving by, anything that's constant throughout your recording. Luckily, there are ways to fix this and most editing programs have powerful tools that help make it possible. So today, I'm gonna to show you a simple way to do this with just a few steps and a few minutes using Adobe Audition. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do before you even start editing is make a copy of your original file. When you save an audition, it overwrites the file that you're working on. So it doesn't create a second file that's like a dot .wav audition file. It saves everything right on that original. So if you don't make a copy of it, then you can't ever go back if you decide that your edits aren't gonna work. So first thing is, let's just duplicate those. Perfect. Okay, and now we need to open Audition. If you've never, it's part of the Creative Cloud, Adobe Creative Cloud, and if you've never opened it before, then um, you might need to install it on your computer. So you can search for it in your Creative Cloud dashboard, and it'll say install right here, and so you'll just install it. Or if it's already on there, you'll click open. So we'll open up Audition, and this is the main dashboard, I think this is the default one, I'm not sure. Um, and so now we need to import our media. So you can do that several different ways. You can, imp you can find it right here in the media browser panel. You can look through the drives and find where your uh, file is. If you already have it open in a finder, then you can just drag and drop it in there. We can just drag it right there. Um, or if you're working on, if you were already working on it in Premiere and you have it already synced up um, and you don't wanna to have to redo that, you can click on that audio track in your timeline, right click on it and go to edit clip in audio edition and it'll bring it right into audition for you and you can edit it right there. And then when you save it, it automatically updates it on your timeline so you don't even have to move it. So. Um, don't worry if it's if yours is embedded in a video or if you don't have a separate audio track You can still drag a video in here or do that little trick and edit it from Premiere So now that we have it in there, let's take a look at it So when we first open it up, we'll see our waveform and the waveform just shows us where the sound is and how much sound is in our track so what we're looking for in order to get rid of the background noise, um, we're looking for moments of silence or moments of a room tone when no, no one's talking and there's no main sound or noise or anything, but it's just these flat areas of no sound or of silence. Um, whenever you are recording, it's good to just to get a bit of room tone whenever you first start recording and uh, that way you'll have these to draw from. So let's listen to it. Some room tone. So it doesn't sound like it's anything, but I guarantee you that is a hum that you're not going to want. Another way to look at it is if you pull up this t this uh, window right here, it brings up the spectral frequency display. So this is like a color version of the waveform. So these areas right here where it looks like we have nothing, those are showing up with color, which means there is a sound there. So this purple area, what we want is this to be black. We wanna turn the purple to black so that there's no sound there. So when we've found the room tone sample, we just will click and drag and highlight part of that that we are going to use to tell Audition, hey, this is the sample, this is the sound that we wanna get rid of. It's kind of like a super sniffing dog and they're tracking a scent, but we're tracking a sound. So we're giving Audition, this is your sample, and in order to capture that noise, we'll press, you can either go up here to Effects, uh, Noise Reduction, Restoration, Capture Noise Print, or you can press Shift-P. Capture Noise Print, yes. All right, 
And then now we need to tell Audition, okay, here's your sample. Now, here's where I want you to look for it. And so that is this entire clip. So I'm just going to select all, Command A. Now that's ready, and I'm ready to open my noise reduction panel by pressing Command Shift P. All right, so you should have three, when you open it, you should have a yellow, a green, and a red. High, low, threshold. So high, low is your noise floor. So what we're gonna be moving around is that threshold. And in order to do that, we gotta adjust some of these settings. Um, the great thing about this little panel is that you can, it'll show you, it'll give you a preview of the sound um, while you're adjusting settings. So you can listen to it and you can adjust it and hear how those adjustments are doing. So let's see. Glorious background noise hum. Okay, so that was weird, but um, okay, so I'm just gonna tell you what it all is. Um, noise reduction, this means the percentage of that sample noise that we're going to remove. So most, some people will be like, all right, I'm gonna remove 100% of it, that's fine. I usually say somewhere between 70 to 90 will be ideal. Um, let's do 80 just for this one. Reduce by means reducing the volume of that sound. So 80% of that sound, I wanna, re I wanna turn the volume down on that. I say usually to have it somewhere around 20 decibels, so. Let's do 20.8, that's fine. Um, so we can turn it off, turn it back on, and we'll be able to hear, let's see. I'm gonna get some room tone. So we have it off, now it's on. So you can hear that difference. Three, reporting live next two months. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so, uh, all right, and then, also on this panel, the next setting, in this advanced tab, we can open that carrot menu and the default of the spectral decay rate. This is kind of a weird, I don't really know how to describe it succinctly, but it basically helps keep you from having that echo sound or that tinny sound. Your default will be at 65%. I don't really know what that is supposed to mean. I don't know why that's the default because I don't use it at that amount. I think that it sounds, that it's better. It's basically like the rate of how fast any audio that's outside of the noise floor, how fast that drops to down 60 decibels. So I think it's better if that rate is a little bit lower so that it's not like that reverb echo effect. So I do it at about 2%. You, you can play around with it to hear the difference. It's a really subtle difference and in some, audio files, it'll be more um, prominent, but that's just, it's kind of a, I don't really know how else to make it, uh, to understand it. Um, I just know that 2% is great, so just <laughs> trust me on that. The lower the number, the less tinny it'll sound. Um, all the other things, I would just leave those there. The FFT side, which stands for fixed, uh, Fourier transform size, I think. That is the amount of individual frequency bands uh, that are gonna be analyzed. So a higher number is better for, um, for long duration sounds like those hums, and a, a shorter number, or a, a lower number is better for shorter duration sounds, so like clicks and pops. Um, but whatever's already there, if you've already, if you're adjusting all these things and you still aren't happy with it, then maybe adjust this, but I would just keep it at whatever it already is. It, But I would either only do four or eight. The, I think the default is four. Okay, so, and then you can also, if you click output, output noise only, it will show you what you're taking out. So, so you can hear that that's what we're taking out. So, play around with that, it's kind of fun. Um, but let's go back here. Oh, and the other thing is, if you don't trust your speakers that much, um, or you feel like every time you've edited your audio before, you then listen to it on YouTube later and it doesn't sound right, you can use this spectral display thing. Click this little button up here, show preview editor, and this basically shows you a before and after. So, like I said, we need to remove the purple. We want it to be black. This is the after. This is what we, and it looks black, like we were, we're doing really well. We've 
reduce that sound a lot. Let's listen to it again. I'm gonna get some room tone. This is on. La, la, that's like magic. Reporting live. Okay. <laughs> all right, so once you're happy with all of your settings, then you'll click apply. And that is literally all you have to do. When you look up here, this little asterisk, that means that changes have been made and you need to save. So you can do file, save, or just command S, saved, and you're ready. And so then again, that is overriding that thing. So this PFK, that just, you don't use that at all. When you drag your file into your editing system, you still pick that same one that you edited with. All the changes are on there and you are good to go. And that's removing background noise.